this is Tom Cogswell from Horizon Hobby and Spectrum RC here to give you another iX12 tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover how to install a TBS Crossfire module, which is this guy right here. It is a long range module for long range planes, quadcopters, and whatnot. And this video is specifically going to show you how to get telemetry information from here to your iX12. A lot of people have been asking me how to do that, and they wanted kind of a walkthrough. I thought it was easy, but I thought I'll make it as easy as possible for you guys. So let's get down to the radio and what you need to do. So on our iX12, we're going to install the TBS Crossfire onto the back. There's a 3D printed mount that you can download or even buy from Brain 3D. Uh, that's a uh, affiliate of ours. They do 3D printing stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, so to install this, you need this cable. This is the Crossfire Adapter Cable SPMA3090, I think is the part number. Um, and that's going to go on the back of the radio. So we'll flip her around. And you guys will see that there is a port right here. Okay, It's got an arrow going in and out. That's the serial port. And I will slip my Crossfire into the back of there. And I just put some double-sided tape on it to keep it in place. For this video, plug it in. All right, so that's step one done. And then step two is to turn on the crossfire or the serial port on your iX12. This is simply done by going to model setup. And we go down to serial port setup, this guy here. It's going to ask you to turn off RF. Yes, we will. And we're going to set our protocol. And if you want to get telemetry, off of your crossfire, you have to choose crossfire 2. So that's step one to get telemetry. Crossfire 2, and we need to power the serial port by that slider there. We'll go back, we'll press and hold it to go all the way back to the main screen, and then we'll flip over our crossfire, and we'll see that, hey, we're on. All right. So we've got a little screen here on our crossfire. This is the, the full crossfire, not the micro. So if you guys are watching this, it's like, oh, I wanted to use the micro. Well, unfortunately, the micro doesn't work because you need this screen. All right, so it's trying to connect. That's what we're seeing there because we haven't turned on our receiver yet. It is seeing that the RC input is uh, crossfire V2 or CRSF2. So what step three we need to do is bind or connect to our crossfire receiver. Luckily, and this is one of my favorite things about this new plane of ours, is on the E-Flight Mini Optera, or Optera 1.2 meter, you can install a crossfire on it. Crossfire receiver plug straight into the flight controller on it using S-Bus, which is pretty cool. So if you guys are using a crossfire receiver, the nano receiver, with a, let's say, a flight controller from a quadcopter, um, there is some settings that you'll have to change on there as well. We'll cover that in just a moment. But for basics, we're going to show how to get RSSI telemetry off of this guy onto our iX12. So let's power her on. All right, so I'm just going to power it on with a receiver pack. I'm not going to plug an actual LiPo battery. That keeps me from having to uh, worry about the motor turning on. Got it right here. And as you will see, my crossfire, because I bound it to this crossfire module previously, will turn on like that. And yeah, my Optera is trying to find GPS. So we're getting data from our crossfire, and we can check on here that that's happening. All right. So we're looking at the back of here. It says running, crossfire V2. So let's say this is step number four, is you need to turn on telemetry on here. So to do that, we press and hold the little button here. We go down to the type of receiver that we have connected. We have an IRX Micro V2. This also works with the Nanos and the full size receiver. You click on that. You got to make sure telemetry is on, right? Okay. And then if you guys are using this with a uh, flight controller, like a race flight or beta flight controller, on the configurator, you need to turn on telemetry as well. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put a screen up that you guys can see. I'll highlight what settings on beta flight and race flight that you need to turn on for getting telemetry info through your crossfire. I'm going to cut in right now and show you guys how to set up flight one and beta flight uh, configurators for multi-rotor flight controllers so that you can get telemetry from the flight controller through your crossfire receiver 
into your iX12. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Hopefully this doesn't take up much time in the video, but this is a good info for you guys. Um, it seems like some people have been struggling with it. So let's go ahead and jump down to the computer. So first off, we're gonna go ahead and do flight one. All right, so let me get this out of the way. I am not a expert by really any means on these guys. If you guys see something that I can do differently that would be better, let me know, drop me a line. I'd love to hear it. Uh, and you know, I, what I do works for me. Um, I've confirmed it with others online and, and, and other peers, but if you guys, you know, think you, there's another way, let me know. I'd love to hear your comments. All right, so let's open up Flight 1. So one thing that's really cool about Flight 1 is that they really just kind of set you through everything you need to do step by step to set up a quadcopter, which is really cool. I, I really appreciate that. And then they've got a nice little troubleshooting and how-to news section here. Um, and th there's a helpful little diagram for us here. I like this because it shows you, and this is a nano, but it's the same kind of pin diagram as it would be with a micro receiver. You've got ground to, and five volt for power, and then you've got channels one and two off of the uh, receiver here. So two, channel two is your telemetry end, they call it. That's gonna go to TX3, and that one's gonna go to TX1. So just make sure you've got that set up properly. And this is an important part right here, if you see this where it says output one and two, those you have to change on the receiver in the output channels menu on, or not on the receiver, well, not on the receiver, but in the output channels menu under the receiver on your module. All right, so we've got that. You've got everything wired up properly by this diagram. You've got this turned on for output ones one and two. Let's go ahead and go to the configurator. I've already plugged in my quad and we've got it up here. So first thing you're gonna see is setup. Like I was saying, make sure that you've gone through everything. Uh, the detect receiver thing's pretty neat to be able to set up. It automatically says, oh hey, I see a, see a receiver here and sets it up for you. As you can see here in the configuration tab, this is where all of our work's gonna be done, all right? Uh, it sets the Crossfire TX pin to UART1. Uh, one thing that you'll have to do is turn on Crossfire Telemetry on TX3. Yes, it's using two UARTs. One thing that I've learned, I'm not sure if this is going to be uh, permanent, um, but multi-shot needs to be turned on for telemetry to work. So keep that in mind. You can't use D-shot or any of these other ones. I don't even think multi-shot 16 kilohertz is works i don't even know what that is honestly and then once you've got all that set up really all you gotta do on your ix12 everything's loaded up go ahead and, and hit auto config on the uh, telemetry menu like we've shown in other videos and it all pops up you're gonna get all of this data here essentially voltage current draw consumed you'll get uh, rssi signal strength is already built into the receiver so you're seeing that automatically you don't even need to turn this stuff on for that all right so that's Flight one, let's do a beta flight quad real quick. Same kind of thing, you wanna have this turned on for beta flight and you have to have this soldered up. So here's an image here. Um, it's been flipped upside down so you can read what the UARTs are. Normally on this uh, type of board, this is our Spectrum F400 board, great board by the way. You can actually run beta flight on it now. I solder, it really nice because you can do RX2, TX2, five volt and ground or on the edge there, perfect for your crossfire receiver. Just right that, like that. Okay, so that's how you have to have it soldered up. And RX goes to TX, TX goes to RX. Kind of keep that in mind on a crossfire receiver. All right, now I don't know if this really needs to be said, but make sure all your firmwares are up to date. I know some people really like to have a certain kind of firmware, and if that's the case, look it up and see if telemetry has been enabled, if there was bugs any, anywhere with it. So this thing I've already got pre-configured but it's pretty simple. So first, like any other receiver, if it's a serial receiver, you have to turn it on, which Crossfire is. So this one I have it into UART2. Serial receiver, right? Any other peripherals that you want to add in, you can do that now. And this is the order of things that you'll want to do. So this is number one. And then number two, we go to the configuration tab, set your receiver out of this list to serial based receiver. And on the serial receiver provider, set it to CRSF for crossfire. And then number three, turn on telemetry down here. Okay, make sure you got that on. And hit save and reboot. 
And really, that's about it. Um, I mean, there might be other extra things that you have to do for certain flight controllers, but this has worked on the many builds that I have done. So, yeah, if you got all this, these settings set up properly, uh, and your ix 12s on Crossfire 2 protocol, should work. Just go to Auto Config and hit it. You should get at least three packets. You'll get one if you're not getting any telemetry from your flight controller. One is the signal strength packet. Okay? All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. Back to our regular programming. So this is including our SSI data, which is what we're showing here. Uh, you're going to get whatever the flight controller is passing through, uh, which is uh, you know, even RPM data, voltage, temperature, whatever it's getting. The X, uh, IX-12 will be able to read that data through the Crossfire link, which is pretty cool. So voltage, current, great stuff for multi-rotor uh, and mini-quads. So we've got telemetry on. It doesn't come on by default. And then also, guys, make sure that your uh, Crossfire is up to date doing this. I think you need to be above 2.06 or something along those lines. But just make sure you're up all the way up to date. That way you're, you're getting all the uh, features that you need. So, we're getting telemetry on there. And we can kind of see what our RSSI is at right now. We're about negative 41 dBm. So let's check out RSSI data from the TBS Crossfire on our screen here. First thing we need to do is go to Model Setup. Well, let's say this is step number five. We go to Model Setup, and then we tap on Telemetry. And we go down to Flight Log Data. And we want to set what our signal strength warning will be at. I like to set mine to a Vibe Alert. Like a, the, the Vibe L is the Vibe Low. It's just a quick little whoop. That way you know, okay, I've exceeded my uh, assigned DBM. And that will give you a warning on the screen. So we, by default, select 84. That's a good place to start. I like to bump it up to about 90. Um, and then just kind of see how it works for me from there. So hit the back button. 90. Done. And then DBM. I feel like DBM, the units here, is probably the most reliable. You can use a RSSI percentage. And then this uh, is a relative RSSI percentage. But we'll just use DBM and tap Save. Make sure you always hit Save. All right. So back to the main screen. We can go and see what our actual RSSI voltage or uh, RSSI signal strength is right here. So we're at negative 30 or so. It's going to bounce around a lot. Um, but yeah. So that's pretty simple. Uh, like I said, with Light One uh, flight controllers and Beta Flight flight controllers, you can get even more data. But RSSI is a really valuable thing that you can get straight off the receiver like we have with our Optera. So excuse the uh, servo cycling there. Um, and if you guys have any questions, please comment below or uh, like and subscribe our channel for more videos and info. Thanks.